Hi, I'm the voice of Dog, and welcome to Let's Play Lisa, the Painful RPG. But before we start the game proper, I'd like to talk about the game mostly responsible for its creation, and the kind of legacy it spawned in the indie game community. I'm talking, of course, about... Earthbound was one of my favorite games growing up. It had a really unique take on the RPG formula with hilarious writing that I still think is funny to this day. But most notably, it had this overall sense of weird that is just really hard to describe. And I think that strangeness is what people remember the most. If you know anything about the indie game or RPG maker community, you might have noticed some games that clearly draw inspiration from Earthbound. This is to be expected, really. Earthbound came out in 1994. Lots of gamers and would-be developers grew up with it, and they've been inspired by it since then. Now, when I say inspired, I don't mean people are just making Earthbound over and over again. That would be dumb. With the huge boom in indie gaming and distribution services like Steam in the last decade, we tend to see a lot of derivative crap. You know, games that try to play on your nostalgia of older games without understanding what made those games unique or fun in the first place. Earthbound likes in general seem to avoid falling into that category. I'm making this video because I want to draw attention to the handful of games that derive inspiration from Earthbound, while still remaining fun, quirky, or interesting in some way. So, what qualifies me calling a game an Earthbound-like? It's not like it's set in stone or anything, but if you look, you can see some common links between these games. For instance, it's always a 2D pixel art style, uh, usually a traditional turn-based RPG combat system, sometimes with one or two additions like Earthbound's rolling health meter or timed hits in Mother 3. The art style is usually somewhat cutesy or homey looking. Their soundtracks are very eclectic, with a wide range of influence, often sampling other music. Uh, the writing usually has a humorous tint to it, with a bit of black comedy here and there. Really though, the most common and memorable element these games share is a great use of tonal shift to juxtapose the cute art style and humorous writing. In Earthbound, you probably remember these most in parts like the alternate moonside dimension, Pooh's dismemberment training, the entirety of the Gigas fight, or the horrific drug-fueled nightmare in Mother 3. Inside the mailbox is the sound of yourself crying. One thing that really set Earthbound apart was that occasional glimpse into the void, and it's something these games are very good at capturing. Keep in mind, these games are all wildly different, and the relation to Earthbound sort of varies. And since people love assigning meaningless numbers to things, I'll bookend each of these with my patented Earthbound-like rating system that I made up just now. It's a 1 to 5 scale that rates the battle system and gameplay experience, approximate level of quirkiness, pixel sophistication ratio, extent to which the jams have been kicked out, and some other thing that's not important. So let's start with... We begin our journey into the world of Earthbound Likes with the very French and very abstract title Off by Mortis Ghost. Off sets itself apart with very minimalist use of color in the environments and then surprises you with its really stylish and detailed pencil drawings for the battle scenes. The game focuses on a mysterious baseball man, only known as The Batter, in his quest to purify this world of ghosts and other undesirables. Off is a game that excels at being vaguely unsettling in ways you can't describe. The whole world it takes place in, the characters, the motivations for the batter's quest, it all just feels slightly wrong. To the point where your entire motivation for playing the game is to figure out what the hell is at the bottom of all this. It helps that the sound design is absolutely fantastic. And even though the battle system is kind of basic, you don't mind as much when the battle song is this. I could listen to this all day. Oh wait, I already do. Honestly, there's a lot I could say about this game, but I'd rather cut myself off here and let you experience it for yourself in some way. It's a free download, so you should check it out. Next up we have... 
Hey man, sometimes you just gotta leave home and wander out into the blood-soaked hellscape that is the world. Our protagonist, Philip, is sad. That's not just how he feels, that's his job class. Philip can't walk a single step or do anything without openly weeping and wailing all over the place. And his only friend and companion is a mutilated horse made out of legs. Space Funeral is a really bizarre game that does its own thing and doesn't seem to give a shit about what you think of it. And that's a huge point in its favor. The battle system really offers no difficulty in any way, but that's not a bad thing in this case. The fights end up being window dressing for the game's weirdness without dragging down the game's relentless pace of confusing the hell out of you. The soundtrack in this game is really something special. It's sort of a found footage collection of music from some really varied sources, like BBC polyphonic collections, creepy poems from Ruth White, classical music from the USSR, droning psychedelic tunes, it really works with the art and writing to make a unique experience. It's also a free download, and is only a few hours long, so there's no reason for you to not try it yourself. Let's keep moving with this upcoming game. I don't remember exactly where I first heard about this game, but the trailer really caught my eye. It's apparently still in development, but it had a really successful Kickstarter. The thing that grabbed me the most was how well the trailer was put together, and the cool stop-motion animation that accompanied the game graphics. The pacing of the trailer was also really good. It was like being on an out-of-control merry-go-round, getting more and more dizzy, until you vomit rainbows. Supposedly, the development is on hiatus while a team moves to the new RPG Maker program thing that's coming out. I'm not really up on the tech stuff, so I'm just going to wait patiently for more news from the developer. One thing I'm really hoping for is that we'll see more cool stop-motion stuff and animation in the game as cutscenes or other assets. I think that would really push the art style over the top for me. Unfortunately, we don't really know a whole lot else about the game besides what's on the Kickstarter page, so I guess we'll just move on to... As of this video, Undertale has recently come out. I had to redo this portion because I was mainly talking about the demo, but it deserves a rewrite. It's hard to encapsulate all the things I like about this game in a short segment, so I'll try and make this quick. Toby Fox does a fantastic job making turn-based combat fun by adding bullet hell-style mechanics to dodge attacks, and there's a lot of variety in the gimmicks the enemies use. The boss fights are really, 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 really good. They're just great. There's also a morality mechanic that affects how the game plays out, and you'll probably find some monsters you'd rather be friends with than kill, which you can do, which is cool. The game has a really good sense of humor and whimsy that reminds me a lot of Paper Mario in the best way. I beat it twice in the first two days it came out, and I already want to play it again because I want to see the things I missed and play the game differently. The soundtrack has a lot of variety and is really memorable, especially the boss fights. Did I mention the game's boss fights are really good? Seriously, my only real criticism about this game is that the background art can feel a bit sparse in some places. Like, it feels a bit empty or plain when I see some other areas with really nice detailed pixel art. That imbalance just kind of irks me a bit. Despite that, it's still incredibly enjoyable in every possible way, and I think Earthbound fans owe it to themselves to experience... Oh no. It's happening. It's raining dogs! Everyone, go play Undertale! It's the only way to fix this! Oh god, no! Toby! Make it stop! I am really looking forward to this game. Mother 4 is actually a fan game being developed by a small team that I believe originated from the Starmen.net forum. They've been working seriously for a couple years now and seem to be making some significant progress. Though they estimated to be done this summer, they've pushed back the release date and enlisted some extra help to speed things along. Normally I'd be skeptical about a fan project like this, but the trailer pretty much killed any doubt I had. The sprite work looks great, the music is catchy, the battle system looks solid, and it seems like the timed hits will be brought back from Mother 3. The game is being built on its own engine from scratch, and it looks like a lot of legitimate love and care being put into this project. 
When it does eventually come out, it'll be completely free, so I recommend keeping an eye out for it. I also wanted to briefly mention a couple games that don't really fit in with the formula I outlined earlier for Earthbound Likes. So here we have Mega Man Sprite Comic RPG. It's a silly spin-off of a silly sprite comic that takes a few pages from Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden to create the Mega Man game we never knew we always wanted. It's not heavy on compelling gameplay, but the humor and art definitely carry it for the one or two hours it lasts. And while I haven't seen a whole lot of Earthbound ROM hacks, Hallow's End is easily the best I've seen. The writing is very solid and feels just like an Earthbound game, and there's been a lot of work put into the new enemy sprites and item descriptions. It's a bit lengthy, but really fun and seems to understand what made Earthbound fun in the first place. And with that, we finally come to... Lisa, hidden subtitle The Painful RPG by Austin Jorgensen, aka Dingaling, aka Widley to Diddly, aka Absurdly Handsome Martial Arts God Austin, please find me an OK Cupid, OK, I love you, bye bye. Austin has made it no secret that Earthbound was one of the primary inspirations for Lisa, and that much is obvious from its art style and traditional looking RPG combat. What makes this game different is its unflinching look at some very heavy subject matter that most games avoid. Some of these things include mental illness, drug addiction, alcoholism, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, bullying, mutilation, suicide, rape, insanity. By the way, this seems like a good time to mention that Lisa is probably the funniest game I've ever played in my life. Yes, I am completely serious when I say that, and no, I am not a sociopath. Let me clarify those last statements a bit. In my opinion, I feel Lisa handles these subjects with a fairly appropriate level of maturity while maintaining a high standard of pitch black comedy throughout. And the reason Lisa is so effective as a black comedy slash drama slash tragedy slash horror RPG game thing is because it is a master of something I like to call tonal whiplash. Let me try and describe the tone of Lisa to you. If Earthbound is a playful but surreal adventure that takes an occasional glimpse into the darkness of the human heart, then Lisa is setting up a lawn chair in front of that darkness and staring into it until you can't tell where it ends and you begin. Lisa is about pain. It's about losing everything you've ever loved and failing at everything you've ever done and becoming everything you've ever hated. It's also the funniest game I've ever played in my life. You'd think a game so bent on being brutal would be really unfair to the player and really unfun to play as a result, but Lisa is somehow different. The game is challenging, sure, but it manages to strike a weird balance between empowering you and beating the shit out of you. A lot of the enjoyment in this game comes from exploring this bizarre, twisted world, and finding new areas, new characters, and new people to kill. Lisa doesn't bog you down with endless overwrought dialogue or random encounters. It focuses on exploration, combat, and survival. And it does each of those very well. Or at least well enough to keep the player engaged. Well, I think that's enough introduction, so next video we'll get into the game proper. I hope you'll join me for Let's Play Lisa the Painful RPG. Thanks for watching.